way back in 2022 when leaks revealed that the Supreme Court was getting ready to overturn Roe v. Wade. I said that they may try to send us back to 1972, but the fact of the matter is they can't because to do that, they would have to get rid of the internet and 50 years of medical advances, referring in part to the availability and safety of abortion medication. I regret to inform you that the anti-choice religious right saw that video, thought I made a very good point, and decided they were going to go ahead and get rid of the internet and 50 years of medical advances. Special shout out to my patrons at patreon.com slash Rebecca, because today I'm going to be talking in part about obscenity, and I'd like to do it as obscenely as possible, which means YouTube's ad program is not going to be happy, but... As of my filming this, the Supreme Court of the United States is currently hearing a case that could effectively ban abortion nationwide. The good news is that experts seem to agree that's probably not going to happen. Yet, the bad news is that there are signs the conservative lunatics on the bench are willing to entertain other ways that Christian conservatives can decide what medicine everyone else gets to have. So the Supreme Court case in question, Food and Drug Administration v. Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine, is so completely inane that you're going to think I'm making this up, but I'm not. The Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine is an anti-abortion group that claims to represent doctors who are so staunchly opposed to abortion that it is actually cruel and unusual to force them to perform one against their will. There are Two glaring problems with this. First of all, none of the doctors represented by the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine are OBGYNs who would ever be asked to perform an abortion. None of them have ever or will ever be asked to perform an abortion. The second problem is that healthcare workers are already legally allowed to refuse to do their job if it involves giving a woman health care and their invisible sky daddy says he doesn't want them to, which, for the record, is fucking stupid. If you're a pharmacist, your job is to, number one, give people their prescriptions, and number two, shut the fuck up. If you want to refuse to tell a customer which aisle the medicated lip gloss is in, that's fine. I don't give a shit. But if you want to tell a woman she can't have her chemotherapy drugs because you think she might be pregnant, go get a job cleaning the toilets at your closest Joel Osteen McMega Church Incorporated or shut the fuck up. But I digress. The case is so ridiculous that even the lunatic regressive judges have expressed skepticism during oral arguments. They would obviously love to rule in favor of the alliance of doctors who hate women, but this would be a bridge too far even for them, especially mere months before a very important election uh, that may well be decided by a majority of Americans who steadfastly refuse to agree that the government should tell women and other birthing people and doctors what to do. The anti-abortion push is wildly unpopular across the nation, and each new dumb fuck ruling makes it that much more likely that more people are going to turn up to vote for Biden in November. So that's Good, But what hasn't been good has been seeing the lunatic conservative justices batting around some ideas for what to do next to end abortion in America. And that involves the Comstock laws. Now, Comstock is what's known as a zombie law in that it hasn't been enforced since the 1970s. But now that Roe v. Wade is gone, it is unfortunately once again relevant. It involves obscenity, which back when Comstock was first introduced in 1873 was defined as whatever your pastor thinks it is, including but not limited to pornography, sex toys, the phrase cheese and crackers when we all know you mean Jesus Christ, and yeah, of course, birth control, anything that could be used to cause an abortion, and information about any of those things. Comstock said that you can't use the United States Postal Service to send any of these obscene materials. And then later they added, you can't use any private source like FedEx to do it either. It's all illegal. For many years after, activists have chipped away at Comstock. In Miller v. California in 1973, for example, the Supreme Court laid out a strict test to determine what is and is not considered obscene. The Miller test is strict enough that it means very few things are now considered too obscene to mail to your grandmother. 
legally speaking, at least. On the contraceptive front, Planned Parenthood founder Margaret Sanger fought tooth and nail against these laws for the right to send condoms to whoever she wanted. Uh, which that's overly flippant of me. Uh, just to be clear, this ban wasn't just about sending individuals sending things to other individuals. Uh, it also applied to stocking the actual OBGYN clinics that would provide contraceptives and whatnot to patients. Like a pharmacy would not be able to order condoms to be shipped to them under the Comstock law. One important ruling that helped on the contraceptives angle for Comstock came in 1965 with Griswold v. Connecticut, where the Supreme Court ruled that people, married people at least, had a constitutional right to privacy that included the right to access contraception. A later decision extended that right even to single people. You're welcome. So that did it for contraception, and then Roe v. Wade came along and did it for abortion, making the entirety of the Comstock effectively dead. And yet, instead of shipping the corpse off to the old incinerator, Congress just let it hang out for 50 years, like Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's. And if you think that that metaphor doesn't really work because Bernie was never going to come back to life, well, you've just exposed yourself to be ignorant of the larger Weekend at Bernie's cinematic universe, or WOBCU, because in Weekend at Bernie's 2, the mobsters hire a voodoo queen who uses a sacrificial pigeon to reanimate Bernie's corpse, which then dances around Manhattan. I'm not making that up. That... That was the plot of Weekend at Bernie's, too. And thus, with Roe v. Wade gone, the reanimated corpse of Comstock is threatening to come for our abortions, including married people's abortions and blue state abortions. It would be a federal ban on abortions that wouldn't require Congress or the Supreme Court to do anything. There's already a law there. They just need somebody to start enforcing it, which is already in Donald Trump's Project 2025 playbook. Uh, which also includes lighting the planet on fire and just getting it over with. So, you know, we'll have other things to deal with, too, if Trump becomes president, but we'll definitely have a federal ban on abortion. Obviously, blue states would challenge such enforcement, but guess where that would end up? That's right, the Supreme Court, where, as I speak, Justices Thomas and Alito just can't stop talking about how Comstock is so great and how weird it is that the FDA thinks they can just get away with flagrantly providing women with health care while the moldering corpse of this very constitutional law is standing in the corner wearing sunglasses waiting to be fully reanimated. So that's what's going on. Vote in November, obviously, but also consider telling your Congress critter to repeal Comstock. Missouri Representative Cory Bush was the first to say that that's what needs doing. So let the rest of them know that, yes, that is a very good idea that the majority of the public supports and will handsomely reward with votes and donations and gift baskets. Somebody send Cory Bush a gift basket. We need to reward this behavior. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks. <laughs>